Hello, my name is Robin Mitchell and welcome to this podcast for ElectroPages. And today we are joined by a very special guest, Alderico from Sphere Labs. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Robin. So today we're going to be looking at the stuff that your company does and specifically the hardware that you guys have been developing. And I've looked into some of this already and I'm quite intrigued. So could you just tell us what the company does and what it makes? Okay, so um, let's put it this way. The company um, uh, was born... Uh, accidentally hmm? uh, in the sense that uh, <laughs> accidentally <laughs> in the sense that yeah you normally you know you always say that you start the company uh, with a very sound business plan and uh, no, it, mm. it, it, it was born accidentally uh, uh, the accident was that um, uh, our parent company uh, has been active in uh, uh, developing uh, uh, um, uh, uh, supervision systems for building automation basically and uh, it's basically a software platform that integrates multiple systems in a building or in a factory, okay? Um, it's a software platform that uh, uh, we, uh, in, with that, um, in that field, we, we always sold as an appliance. That means a piece of software running on a piece of hardware. And um, we have always used industrial PCs for that. Um, then, uh, well, several years ago now, uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, was introduced uh, in the market. And um, shortly after that, we um, started asking ourselves if we could uh, make our platform run on the Raspberry. Uh, and it worked. Uh, that platform is basically running on any Linux system uh, and, 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 mm. and, and a Java virtual machine. So it, it, it actually worked pretty well on Raspberry. So we, we started saying, uh, why don't we um, think of uh, uh, selling our platform in a, let's say, entry level uh, uh, version uh, mm. based on Raspberry Pi, uh, which was, uh, of course, definitely cheaper than, than using a, a full blown, uh, let's say, industrial, industrial. Oh, I can imagine. Um, mm. And uh, that could be used as an entry level uh, step into, into building automation. Um, and, and, uh, and it made sense and we did it. So um, I was on the website uh, for Sphere Labs and I saw that you got, it looks like you've got three main categories yeah. of pro different products. Could yes. you go through those different ones? Uh, basically we have uh, uh, three product lines. Um, one is called Strato mm -hmm. and Strato is basically a line of uh, mm -hmm. edge servers, uh, all based on Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. um, with uh, uh, several versions with different capabilities in terms of uh, uh, um, communication, uh, power supply, uh, and uh, uh, storage, stuff like that. Uh, the second line is IONO. IONO is uh, a line of uh, input-output modules from the I.O. of IONO, and uh, those are based on mm. either Raspberry Pi or Arduino. And the third line is EXO. Uh, EXO is a line of uh, environmental sensors, indoor environmental sensors, um, uh, based on um, a Raspberry Pi, uh, basically. Both uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, traditional computing core or the RP2040 uh, uh, Raspberry Pi microcontroller. Uh, uh, now, one thing mm -hmm. about the name is like uh, Sfera Labs, the name of the company. Uh, the first part, Sfera, is the Italian uh, word for sphere. Okay. Uh, so, like Strato and Sphere makes Stratosphere, then Ionosphere, Exosphere, and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. So, it's, so it's, kind of, it's like an yeah. encompassing thing. It's like the, 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 the globe. And that's where general. these funny names come, come from, actually. And uh, basically, the the the, um, the products. If you want to have a peek inside, uh, it's something like this. Think of like basically this is standard Raspberry mm. Pi, okay. And on top of that uh, is uh, yeah. sits our our board. It's like a hat in a sense. Very very yeah. densely populated. They they normally have many more components than the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, and uh, yeah. uh, because you know the um, uh, the interface of of a platform is normally where most of the electronics uh, has to be, uh, particularly if it has to be robust, 
uh, in terms of uh, immunity uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, electrical, uh, you know, uh, being electrical robust and stuff like that. So it's it's a lot of components, and uh, and, and that's the yeah. way it works. So this this is basically, for example, this is the the, the Stratopi can. Uh, uh, inside, um, uh, it has power supply, um, a CAN interface, RS-485, um, a real-time clock, um, uh, uh, external watchdog, and stuff like that. Um, and that's based on the, on, the, mm. on a standard Raspberry Pi uh, uh, model uh, model B, so version four or or the previous version three plus of three. Um, we have other versions um, that are based on the compute module, which is the, let's say, version of the Raspberry Pi core that has been specifically designed for embedded applications. Um, um, yeah. And um, uh, this allows us to, to create even smaller, smaller products, uh, like, for example, this one here is uh, a, a very, very small, basically way smaller than this, uh, hmm. it's, and it's DIN mounted as well, which is, and which is uh, nice. it's based on the compute module. Yeah. It's the Stratopi CM, um, and this is built with two boards uh, that host basically the, the compute module. And it's pretty interesting that basically on such a small thing, you have a quad core, 1.5 gigahertz uh, 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 general purpose uh, processor. Uh, that that basically, like I don't know, ten years ago, it was uh, something probably sitting in a nineteen nineteen inch rack in a data center, and uh, and here you have it uh, that weighs like ninety grams, and uh, and it it's so so tiny. These are perfect for let's say edge for let's say powerful edge computing applications where you have to run yeah. a full stack operating system, not just like firmware or a microcontroller. Um, uh, you need memory, you need, you need uh, uh, a CPU performance, you need storage, you need networking, and you need that maybe in a, in a very remote place or deeply embedded in a much mm. larger system. Uh, this, this is the, let's say, typical application for, um, for, for, for these things. Now I've got one question about the uh, the use of open source. Um, what what's driving uh, that decision, and why you feel like it's the right thing yeah, to do? The, um, basically, uh, we um, the idea of uh, of what we do in general, whether it's hardware or software, is that uh, we we are not developing a piece of hardware for a specific application. We are developing hardware that serves as a platform for people to build their own applications and all. And uh, so mm -hmm. we, 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 you know, when you, when you approach a design, um, whether it's hardware or software, um, uh, 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 in this case, we are not like, we don't have the, the, the like a, a list of things uh, that our application needs to do because we have no applications. We have like a general idea yeah. of, what, of what could be done uh, and we try to implement a flexible architecture that is both in hardware and software. Uh, the hardware part, uh, on the hardware part, it means that we have different versions, and we have, in many cases, in basically all, all, all cases, we have a hardware platform that is highly configurable, flexible. It can be, uh, uh, let's say, used even in different ways than we originally, uh, let's say, uh, considered during the design phase. Um, and the same goes for the software. We, um, I mean, you could use these products without any software uh, from coming from us. Uh, you don't need any of that. You can build your own. Um, we provide uh, libraries, um, uh, both on the firmware side and uh, higher level, uh, like kernel modules for Linux to make things simple uh, for, for the developers. But they are more like references uh, or building blocks or starting points. Uh, you as a designer could uh, completely re-engineer the whole thing and, and, and start from scratch, from scratch. And that's why we do like the software part completely open because it's, it's more like uh, a reference design uh, of how to interface uh, or, and, and use the different uh, 
the different features of the of the hardware than uh, uh, than a finished um, than a finished application. That's the uh, uh, that's the that's the idea. And on the hardware side, um, uh, again, the difference between using like the Raspberry Pi Model B or the compute module is um, again part of that because um, in some cases customers our customers prefer to use the compute module for 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 several reasons some other cases they prefer to use the standard raspberry pi um, in all cases in all cases um, the key point here is that um, these products are in, let's say immediately familiar to those using them because they are basically a raspberry pi so uh, if you know how to use a raspberry yeah. pi uh, if you know how to turn on a, an LED connected to the to a GPIO pin, uh, you basically are let's say ninety percent done uh, on uh, on using our products. If I'm not mistaken, I also believe that a lot of code can be uh, cross-platform between those two uh, devices, especially if you're using the Arduino IDE, because uh, yeah. you can you can have support for both, and in, and then Indeed. the uh, the interpreters in the background just change how the output code Indeed. comes out. But, actually, but you can use yeah. You can actually, in fact, use the the Ar you, the, uh, the Arduino IDE uh, uh, also uh, with a plugin, basically, to develop yeah. uh, 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 firmware straight for the RP twenty forty. Uh, basically, the RP2040 is supported in the Arduino IDE. So you are familiar, if you are familiar with that, if that is your, your development mm. platform, your preferred development platform, you can just as well develop for mm. RP2040. In fact, all our firmware that we, we provide open uh, as open source uh, uh, for our, let's say, MCU microcontroller-based products um, is basically just one version that is fully portable between... Uh, yeah. Arduino, the Arduino platforms, uh, and the, the the Raspberry Pico and uh, RP twenty forty um, twenty forty MCU platform. Uh, on the and, other and hand, so, if you're uh, familiar with the development uh, developing RP twenty forty, uh, for example, on the on the on the native SDK that Raspberry hmm. um, has developed, uh, you can just uh, go with that. And that's again the beauty of integrating this kind of, um, let's say, uh, widely popular platforms into our hardware. Mm. You, don't, you, you don't have to change any, any, any one of your habits or as, a, as a developer. Yeah. You keep doing the things the way you used to. Um, so for the engineers who are currently listening to this podcast and who want to get involved with your products, what would you recommend to do? Yeah, well, uh, have a look at our products uh, because... Um, the, the, the products are really easy to use. Um, you can uh, look at the documentation. We, we publish for many products where it makes sense. We also publish the full schematics of these boards, like these boards I showed you before. You go to the website, you can download the full schematic. Um, so you can see how it's built uh, internally for other more complex products where publishing the schematic would basically be a pretty significant uh, uh, set of, uh, of document of documentation, we published very very detailed down to the single line uh, yeah. uh, uh, block diagrams. Uh, we also publish um, uh, again, as I said, the, the software, firmware, and uh, uh, a very um, uh, let's say uh, deep uh, and technical. Um, uh, user guides or programmers guides uh, for for all the products. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, the great the, the key thing is that these products are not let's say intimidating, like a, something completely new, and you have to learn everything from scratch. It's super easy. Uh, you can take advantage of that. Um, uh, look around and uh, uh, and play with these things. That's the that's the thing, and uh, you will find uh, <laughs> the. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, use cases probably where uh, where these kind of products uh, just uh, fit perfectly right in the in the in the applications you need to do. Brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank you.